in the last video we talked about our rib cage, which got kind of complicated. Diaphragm, chest muscles, upper rib cage, lower rib cage. Where do our ribs get knitted on at the back? They get knitted onto spine bones. Now, let's look at the spine and then the intestines. But where does the spine begin? So what is the spine? The spine is a combination of bones knitted together to create what we call the spine. The spine starts at the back of our head, right at the top, right underneath that bone at the back of the head. Seven spine bones curve a little bit inward to create our neck. And then 12 spine bones curve outward to create our upper back. And then five spine bones curve inward to create our lower back, which then gets knitted on to the hips. And we'll talk about the hips in another video. But what keeps our spine bones from flying apart away from each other? Well, the tissues that knit them together, ligaments and tendons. All right, so we've got spine bones. And let's talk about tendons because tendons are what knit the muscle onto the bone. What do the ligaments do? Knit the bone onto the bone. Let's keep it that simple. Let's keep it simple. Think of it like that. Ligaments, bone to bone. Tendon, muscle to bone. Okay. Do you think there's muscles around your spine? Absolutely. Absolutely there is. What movements can we do with our spine? Well, we can move forward. And we can move backward. We can move side to side. We can rotate. And we can do all combinations of those movements, which I suppose you could call dancing. <laughs> or grace or elegance. The very precise ability to move our spine bones as they slide around one another, fairly loosely, but are knitted tightly enough to hold us upright and strong. So that while we're dancing, if someone comes by and hits us in the back, it's fine. As long as they don't hit us too hard, it's fine. Because we have both strength and integrity as well as grace and elegance. Now, our, that's our spine bones and the muscles that live along the spine bones. We haven't talked about the spinal cord yet, we'll get there. But what do you think that looks like? All of those muscles that create all those movements. Well, actually it kind of looks like the spine bones are knitted together, literally, by yarn. You've got kind of a weaving happening and you've got these, these tiny little muscles, there's hundreds of them, knitting each spine bone together in different ways to create all those movements. And then the next layer is muscle that then lines the entire spine. So it, it's not knitted onto each bone individually. This sort of goes from the top of the head, these spine bones, or muscles, these spine muscles go from the top of the head all the way down to our hips. And they help us to create the bigger movements, the backwards, the forwards, you know, they're the things that help pull and oh, you know, these big movements. Now, those bones live beside the spine, kind of behind the spine, but not fully, because we can, t we can touch our spine bones, we can feel our spine bones, a chiropractor does it. And we can also, we can't feel the front of the spine. We can't get to the front of the spine. The front of the spine is behind our organs. So we don't think about it very much, but the front of the spine exists, doesn't it? We have a front to the spine. We have sides, we have a back. Of course we have a front. Muscles line that part of the spine from the top all the way down behind our organs. Now those muscles, those muscles can get tight. 
And we can't just stretch them out, can we? We can't just take, a, take our muscle and stretch it out because they live behind the organs. We have to be very strategic about how that's handled. But why would those get flexed? Well, we could be holding ourselves upright at our computer for a little too long and those muscles get overwhelmed. Or we could be lifting bales of hay or pieces of concrete or sod clods or whatever it is you do with your day. It's lots of things. And one of those things that causes the front muscles of the spine to flex and shorten is tension, is not feeling comfortable in a situation. So let's back up. Once again, what do we mean by tension? And if you don't know yet, go back to the hand and wrist video. I explain tension in detail in that one, the hand and wrist. Tension is when muscles are in mid flexion. So they're pulling the bones that they're knitted onto, they're pulling those bones and squishing them together so that we get shorter somewhere. So if those front spine bones, which are attached at, up here and down into the, toward the hips, if those muscles start to get tight and short and thick, the spine compresses. We get a little shorter. And if that's compressing at the front, we're gonna be forward a bit and no one's gonna notice. You're not gonna be able to see this. It's very subtle. But when those spine bones compress at the front, that affects our organ function. Number one, because the space in our abdomen is gonna be less. So our organs are gonna get squished in what's already a very small office space in the abdomen. Right? Our organs, our liver, our spleen, our stomach, our pancreas, our intestines, kidneys, etc., etc., etc. All those organs that are in that office space, the abdomen, if our spine is compressed and we're forward a bit, and especially if this is flexed, which happens when we're not feeling comfy, there's not very much office space left in there, is there? Their office space has shrunk. So they're not able to do their work as well. Each organ can't perform quite as well if we have limited the space they work within. By having flexion at the front of our spine and through the lower rib cage. And if you're confused by that, go watch the rib cage video. Um, head, neck, rib cage. And it'll tell you all about how when we're feeling uncomfortable in a situation, we're going to flex in certain strategic spots. And one of them is the front of our spine. And one of them is our lower rib cage. And when those two things are flexed, the stomach's eventually going to probably get upset, possibly. Or, or you might get a headache. Or mental clarity might decrease. Or you just start to might feel overwhelmed. Or you might start to not have as much breath to speak. So you might start to almost feel like you're hyperventilating when you're speaking or that you're not getting, you don't have your wind so that you're, you're having to breathe mid-sentence. It's because we're only breathing here. But the spine bones, what else would they do? Those spine bones that are compressing at the front, well, there's a spinal cord inside those bones. And what's our spinal cord? Our spinal cord is part of our nervous system. Okay, our spinal cord is a big home base for a lot of our nerves of our body, right? So, for example, the nerves that come and help the intestines and stomach do their job, right? Everything needs a nerve to it. Our nervous system keeps us rolling, keeps us going. It's our wiring. Our nervous system is our wiring. So, the organ, the stomach and the intestines are plugged into the spinal cord so that they can do their job so they're, they're, they're active and they're, they're able to work. Otherwise, if they weren't plugged in, they wouldn't be doing anything, right? So our organs are plugged into our spinal cord. The wire, the cord, that brings, that sort of connects the two, connects that stomach to its outlet. <laughs> those, not, those wires need lots of space. Those, they're not just electrical wires. This is nerves, this is the human body. It's very complex, it's very intricate. And everything has a certain vitality to it, a certain, I don't know what, do you know what I mean? 
there's that. So as those nerves come out to the spinal cord, through the spine bones, to come into the organs to help them do their job. What happens if there's compression along the front of the spine? Well, maybe those nerves don't have as much space as they'd like. And maybe that affects the functioning of that organ that it's trying to get to. But what happens if we're just simply, what, what if the nerves are all working really well and we actually don't have that much compression in the spine and everything's fine and the nerves work great? That's most of the time. That's most of the time. So don't worry. I'm talking about extreme cases. What if you're just tense? And what if you're flexing here and at the front so that there's not a whole lot of space for your organs? Well, eventually, the stomach and the intestines are not going to be all that happy with you. They're not going to be all that happy. They're not going to, they're going to be trying their best to help you. They're going to try to be trying their best to do their job. But they just don't have the office space to do it. The thing about the stomach and the intestines is that they are also muscles. They are also muscles. The stomach is a muscle that's hollow on the inside that receives the food we eat, produces enzymes and gastric juices, and then starts to mix all that together with its muscle, right? And when the stomach's done of its job, it dumps the food into the small intestine. And then the small intestine starts to do its job because the small intestine is also a hollowed out muscle that has to mix and mash and push the food down through to get to the large intestine, which you're right, again, muscle with a hole in it, <laughs> a, a cylinder of muscle that gets to flex and move food around and do its task. So when those things are feeling a little upset and they don't have a whole lot of space to do their job, we might get things like regurge or heartburn, or we might get an upset stomach or indigestion, or we might have where we don't want certain foods and we're starting to crave maybe some comfort foods, things that are easy to digest. And we actually don't actually, salad and meat and nuts and those types of things aren't appetizing to us in the intestines as well. So there can be dysfunction in the stomach and the intestines because they are muscle, but also because they need lots of space to move and uh, do their job. And that's why the rib cage and the spine come into play. So that it's not just organ function, but it's how we carry ourselves as to how our organs are going to function. And it's not necessarily how <clears throat> tense and upright we are. It's a balance. It's about how able we are to expand and it's how able we are to stay aligned and not like an oak tree and rigid which probably looks like good posture and it is technically but the body needs to move the body needs to move and so maybe think about being a little bit more like a palm tree than an oak tree if you're having some digestive or organ issues and how we carry ourselves gets complicated, doesn't it? These videos were so easy when we were talking about hands and elbows, wasn't it? <laughs> now we're talking about organs and spine bones and nervous system and blood circulation and all this stuff now. But that's, that's what it is. Everything's connected. Everything's in communication with one another. And we are a beautiful symphony that's put together and maybe the horn section's a little off, or the string section's a little off, but we're still a symphony. We are still this beautiful, complicated thing that we get to learn about. And the more we learn, the more we should want to learn, the more we should feel empowered to be able to get more able and functional and capable so that we can manage our own optimal health by understanding our body mechanics in addition to our body chemistry and our nutrition and all that other stuff. But don't forget about body mechanics. It's a big deal. Let's talk about it more in the clinic once you make an appointment. We'll see you soon.